Hi everybody, this is Matt with Digital PTO and I wanted to give you a quick tutorial on how to add payment integration with your Wufu forms on your Digital PTO site. The very first thing you're going to do is make sure that you have all the information you need. So you're going to have an authorized.net account which you will have gotten from Capital Merchant Solutions. If you haven't integrated that into your form yet, be sure to see our tutorial on adding your authorized.net info to your Wufu forms. We're going to assume you've already taken care of that. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to start adding uh, payment options to your form. So the very first thing we want to do is find your form and go ahead and click edit. And this is a generic form that we made. Um, the things that you're going to want to make sure you have on your form if you don't have them already are a name field, an address field, and an email field. If you have all those fields, uh, it will make it a lot easier for people to check out in the long run. And I'll explain that in a little bit. Beyond that, there's essentially four different ways that you can collect payment information or uh, collect payments on your form. The first way is to have a drop-down list like this. So we've got, you know, select an option, and we just put in three different options here, option one, two, and three. You can make these whatever you want, however much you want them. And you don't actually have to put the price in here, but I like to put the price in so people know what their options are. Um, that's totally up to you, but if you want to do that, that's great. The second option, which is actually down here, is a checkbox option. So this is basically the exact same thing we had above, except people can check more than one thing. So let's say this is you know, add a phone book to your registration and uh, become a member and uh, sign up for the fun run, for example. So you could have three different things here with either the same price or all different prices, however you want to do it. And you could even have more. It doesn't have to be three. Um, so that's another option. The third option is to have a direct input amount so we can say, okay, we want people to be able to give however much money they want to the PTO or PTA. So you can just put in uh, this field here and they can enter, you know, $10 or $200 or whatever they want to do. And it will end up charging for that. One thing I want to show you real quick, these other two are just simple drop downs and text boxes, but this one's actually a little more complicated to add. So let me go down here and do add field. Usually we're using the standard fields up here. Um, this is where you get your name, by the way, and your address and your email. This is also where you get price. So if we take this over and drag it in, you'll see we have an input field here. And you can obviously change the name you know, amount to whatever you want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and delete that for now. And the fourth option is to assign a price to the form itself. So just by default, if they submit the form, it costs them X amount of dollars. Let's say it's, you know, $10 to join your PTO or PTA. You could just have a generic, it costs 10 bucks to fill this form out. And I'll show you how to set that up in a moment. And then there aren't any options for people to select. It just charges them the $10. So once you've set up all the options that you want, and you'll probably only use one or two of these at most, um, you very rarely will use all of them, but it is possible. Um, so this is kind of a loaded form here. But So we're going to go ahead and click form, Save Form, and we'll go back to the Form Manager. And now we're going to click on Payment, and this is where we're going to enter all of our information. I've got this one loaded up here already. Um, assuming that you're using Authorize.net and you've already entered your login ID and your transaction key, these are fake ones, so our form won't work. Um, but again, if you haven't done those, be sure to see our tutorial called Adding Your Authorized.net Info to Your Wufu Forms. Once that's done, we're going to go to step two, which is the payment options. So we have a couple different options here. We have Show Running Total, which basically will give us uh, a mini shopping cart up in the corner that will follow people around and tell them how much they're getting charged on this form based on their selections. We also have Collect Shipping Address. If you're going to be shipping something to someone, you want to collect the shipping address. In most cases with PTAs and PTOs, you don't need to do this one. Pre-populate billing info. This goes back to what I was explaining with the requiring the name, address, and email. If we check this, what this is going to do is it's automatically going to fill in the information that people have already provided for you on the credit card payment form. So you want to assign the different fields. So under the name field, we're going to select the name. Address, we'll select address. And under email, we'll select email. Now you might have these named differently but just make, make sure to check the ones that are um, mapping to these requirements. Limit card types accepted. This will allow you to specify which cards you accept if you're not accepting all four. So if you're just doing you know, MasterCard Visa, for example, you can just check those two. Um, if you're accepting e-check payments, you can allow for that. Most of our PTAs and PTOs are not doing that, but if you have signed up with that at, with authorized.net, you're welcome to do that and then email receipt to the user. And you can customize that email receipt and you can click on that and get more information about that. Once you've got all that set up, the next step is to assign the prices. 
Now the very first thing you'll see is this fixed amount field. And this is what I was referring to earlier when you can just charge an amount to fill out your form. So let's say your PTO or your PTA charges $10 to become a member. So we can just say $10 and enable payment and save settings and you're good to go. Every time somebody fills out the form, they're gonna be charged $10. Now if that's not the case, if you have different options, you can just leave that field blank. And then what you've got down here is select a price enabled field. Now this is gonna be a list of anything that you have that could potentially be assigned prices. So there's gonna be things in here like student name or other things like that that might not be applicable. If you've made fields that will allow for pricing, this is where you're gonna find them. So let's do the first one here. We have the product event sample. I believe this was our drop down menu. So we're gonna select that one and hit assign prices to this field. Now here's another reason why it's a little bit easier to um, do this if you've already put the prices on your drop down. You can see how much they cost. So we can just go in here and say, okay, that's $10, that's $15, and this one's $20. And that one's good to go. Now we could just say save settings. And whenever somebody selects something from that drop down menu, it will charge in this amount. So let's go ahead and do another one. You'll also notice that this list is getting shorter because we've already assigned something to this one. So now we have the direct input option, which was the just type in how much do you want to pay. So let's assign prices to that. That one doesn't have any amounts because it's based on what the user says. And then the final one is the checkbox one. So we'll assign prices to that one. It's going to work the same way as the other ones. So we're just going to say this one happens to be 10, this one's 20, and this one's 30. Now, if we're all set, good to go. If this box is not checked yet, go ahead and check enable payment and then click save settings. All right, and now you're all set. So everything that we've done in our example is good to go. If you want to preview your form, go back to your form and hit view. That will open it up in a new window. And you'll see here's our running total that we talked about. So obviously your name, email, etc. And then down here, you'll see the running total also kind of comes down with us. So if we select a $15 option, all of a sudden we're going to see we have $15, and it's option number two. It tells you what it is. In this one, let's say we want to donate $150 to the PTA. It adds it up there. And then we also want to add this third choice, whatever that happens to be. So it's there. And then we uh, have a total of $195, and we're ready to go. Once they submit, it will take them straight to your credit card processing form. Again, if, we had, if I had typed out my name and my address and my email, it would be uh, listed right here. Otherwise, they have to type it in themselves. And then when they hit submit, it will obviously uh, collect the payment for them. Uh, this one won't work, of course, because we have fake API information in there from authorized.net, but that's how that works. Well, there are a bunch of different ways you can collect money and payments on your forms, um, but if you have any questions, if you have some idea of how you want to accomplish this and don't understand a way to do it, let us know in the support forums or contact us, and we will be happy to help customize a uh, payment processing solution with you. If you have any questions, let us know, and thank you again for being a digital PTO customer.